Yes, you heard that. We are right at the heart of a dialysis unit, renal unit, if you would like. So you'd be expecting a couple of that. But all the same, we're here to get to learn some basis of dialysis. And uh, taking us through that uh, session is none other than George. George yes. is an, a what? What is that again? Nephrologist. Nephrologist nurse. Yes. yes. Uh, so terms right here could be a little bit tricky. But all the same, it's for me to make sure that at least you also get to understand what is in the medical world right here. Karibu sana, it's always a pleasure to have you as we take you through this and straight to it, as I have said, at the dialysis unit, and that is set right at the Rui Family Hospital as we get to understand the procedures of dialysis. We might not be able to actually do the procedures, but all the same, now that we are inside here and there's some patients behind, I guess we will get the basic knowledge. What it is that you get to ask your doctors or what it is that you get to ask on behalf Half of your family members who are supposed to undergo that procedure. So, Dr. Tari, Asante Sana for hosting us. Welcome. Welcome. Many years in Alia Kwanza. Just got to my Aribu machine. See you. What are you doing, Maji? Can Maji measure? Yes, 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 yes. And so we are expecting that. Uh, now that we'll get to know at what point Dr. Tari says that he needs to put water there and what it's all about. The machine, the dialysis machine, that he wants to believe. And as green as you are, I think I am, and we will be getting to learn that in a bit. Let's wait for Dr. Tari. Okay. said Dr. I see you may, you've put water that uh, there. So what is that water for? This is what to call acid concentrator. Acid concentrator. Yes. All right, let's not rush this. <laughs> I, I'm sure we're going to learn that. And Dr. tells me that we'll be using this dialysis machine. It is a dialysis machine, right? Dialysis machine. And so in a few, we get to learn about the basics of, you know, uh, the dialysis, you know, procedure, just what it entails. Anytime you march into a hospital and you're told that your loved one or yourself should undergo a dialysis, what are some of the key questions that you need to ask your doctor? Or what are some of the things that you need to understand? So that at least you're not surprised with the procedure you have no idea about and so right here Dr. Ari Hasanti Sana for uh, accepting to speak to us yes. and we're looking forward to learn some of the basics of this uh, from you yeah. I know we have patients around we won't be having a procedure done on them but at least we'll be able to check up on the machine and what it's all about you know on more or less like a theoretical way of it so you tell me that we're going to be using this machine, yeah, this machine is sour, sour. Yeah. how about we switch just exactly what is a dialysis? In medicine, dialysis is the process of removing excess water, uh, water solutes and toxins from the blood in uh, people whose kidneys can no longer perform these functions naturally. This is referred to a renal replacement therapy and the first success uh, or successful dialysis was performed sometimes in 1947 and it has been of great help all through for very many people and so that means there's some element of success in this. You march into this room and there's so much life. The patients you know are happy, they're enjoying their meals, it's because hope has been sold to them and so we just get to understand how important is dialysis process and Dr. Ari, once again I am coming to you and I know this is the dialysis machine I guess yes. it's now for you to tell us just exactly what is uh, you know dialysis process in layman's language yeah dialysis process is a procedure which is done on patients mm -hmm. which the kidneys has failed and we have the Major, we have many causes of kidney failure, but major, we have two primary causes of kidney failure. Mm -hmm. One of them is hypertension, poorly, poorly controlled hypertension. Secondly is poorly controlled diabetes. diabetes. Mm -hmm. Those are the major causes of the chronic kidney failure. Okay. And we have another one called uh, acute kidney failure, which is uh, this, can be, this can be resolved if dialysis is done early enough. Mm. The patient will come out of the kidney failure okay. and they go back to their normal life. Mm -hmm. But the chronic one, there's a, something like a life, a lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, you will need dialysis for a lifetime or, oh, or transplant. Uh -huh. yes, or transplant. Okay. Yes. All right. We have a transplant. We can do transplant if they are, but it's a, it's an expensive procedure, but it's available in Kenya mm -hmm. and in many hospitals they do now. So for that, that is a lifestyle, how often does one then need dialysis? After how long? 
uh, because now most of our patient, most of patients who are doing dialysis, mm -hmm. they're using NHIF card. And NHIF card provides for two sessions per week, twice okay. per week. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So how, 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 how long does the session take? Uh, so for instance, I've just seen one of the patients walk out. They're done with the procedure? Yes. Also, every time they come for that, and then they know that I'm done with the procedure, and they exit. Yes, yes. So it is necessary that they have two sessions per week? Per or, week. or even more? Even more. Even more. Uh, even, we recommend three, but because of the financial, financial issues, yes. so we do two. Uh -huh. And this that. keeps them going? It sustains yes. them? It keeps them going. All it right. keeps them strong. They, they do their normal duties, which they used to do. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should have started by saying, what causes kidney failures? Yeah, what causes kidney failure? In, we have two types of kidney failures. We have what called chronic, chronic kidney failure and acute kidney failure. Okay. In the chronic kidney failures, we have uh, major causes of chronic kidney failures are hypertension, poorly controlled blood pre high blood pressure, which is called hypertension and also poorly controlled diabetes, yeah. Okay, Yeah. all right, well, fair enough. So yeah. once uh, you are told that you're supposed to go through a dialysis process, it's a process, right? Yes, yes. Uh, what should go into your mind? What should be the expectation? What are some of the questions that one needs to ask the doctor? And in terms of finances, like you rightfully put it, it's yes. an, it could be an expensive affair. Yes, yes. What does one need to prepare for? Uh, when, when a patient is being recommended by a doctor to do dialysis, eh? first of all, we usually encourage them to to update their NHIF cards, okay. so that they can they can use the card to do the procedure. Mm -hmm. And also, before we start dialysis, there's a procedure of uh, doing what we call catheter insertion. Okay. Catheter insertion is a pipe which is being inserted in the body, so that we use it during the dialysis. Mm -hmm. Yes. You said the dialysis takes how long? It takes four hours. Four hours. Four to six hours. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And once you're done with that, then the catheter is, mo is removed? No. That you have to. That, that is something which is uh, inside the body. Okay. It, is, uh, it stays in the body. It stays in the body. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. So here we are. And uh, this is the machine? This is the machine. Mm -hmm. Like this machine is, is called Cabro. Yes. Cabro, AK-98. We have several machines. We have another one called Nipro, like okay. that one. That's yes. a different type, but they're doing the same. They're doing the same thing. The same thing. Okay. This, this is, is also Cabro. Cabro. Uh -huh. This is Nipro. Okay. This is Nipro. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the machine which we, we come and we, we, this is the machine which a patient uses for four hours doing dialysis. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, could you please briefly take us through, uh, you know, what this machine does, what this is yes. that appears like blood. At some <laughs> point in time, I've seen you putting water yes. inside that bag. Uh, we probably just need to have a, uh, know, yeah. a brief understanding of that. Uh, this machine, uh, we shall do what we call disinfection. After, like, now this patient has gone home. Okay. You have to do what we call disinfection. You're mm -hmm. seeing this machine is... It's this is, ah, uh, all right. It's, it's, the process has already started. No, no, I, it, it's on the, yeah. I yeah. have seen something written right there on the wall. Yes, yes. Renal machine disinfection chart, yes. Monday and Thursday, yes. uh, Tuesday and Friday, Duke, yes. Wednesday and Saturday. It, yeah. Okay. So because, uh -huh. we, we do that disinfection so that we prepare the machine for uh, another patient who okay. may be coming. Okay. So we have uh, three to four items here. Mm. We have what we call blood lines. These are the blood lines. Okay. You are seeing this one. Mm -hmm. We have to call this the dialyzer. This is now the artificial kidney. Okay. The artificial kidney. This okay. Is now what this that? one is supposed to boost your actually. This, this is the one who's the, doing the dialysis. This is the artificial kidney now. Okay. And we have what you call uh, <coughs> SKF. Eh? This acid concentrate. And we have, have what you call bicarbonate salt here. Okay. And we have what you call uh, water. There's a water from water plant. We have a plant behind here. Mm -hmm. It's a water which comes through these pipes. And so it's connected, I can see somewhere around. Yeah, some pipes there. Okay, connected yes. to all right. Yes. Uh -huh. So if that water is coming from that, and why would we need another you know, uh, bag of water there? Eh? There's what we call conductivity in this machine. Okay. It has to mix that water from the water plant. Mm -hmm. It's mixed with the acid concentrate and the bicarbonate, so that they're able to to mix with the blood which are dirty mm. and they clear. Mm. Yeah. So what exactly does it mean uh, when you say that a patient is on dialysis? Uh, it means that this patient 
that's, it means that the, the kidneys has failed, and that's, a, that's, a, that's like a treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so as you're going through the dialysis process, yes. do you have to take other medications, or like, do you have to take other medicines, or, you know, uh, does the doctor you know, uh, prescribe something else that you would be taking uh, even as you go through the process? Yeah, because uh, if the cause of the, of, the, of the kidney failure was high blood pressure or mm. uh, diabetes, the patient should continue with this medication mm. as prescribed by the doctor. All right. And also we have a medication for, to boost the HP of the patient, the blood levels. Patients with the kidney failure they usually have a low, low blood levels. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. because the kidney is the one which produces uh, what we call erythropoietin, mm -hmm. the one which, which processes the blood. So when we have the failure, so that it's not able to produce the erythropoietin, mm -hmm. so the patient will not be, able, will be having low, low, low HB, okay. which is what we usually call uh, anemia. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, yes. So we usually give a booster known as uh, iron. And also we give what we call erythropoietin, mm -hmm. artificial or erythropoietin, okay. yes, to boost the blood levels. All right. Yeah. So how long can one survive on a dialysis? Uh, so far, we have seen people even who are going more than 30 years. Okay. Yes, with dialysis. Oh, for 30 years. Yes. Uh, does it in any way have effects on someone's body, you know, on the long run? No, if you follow your dialysis prescription, uh, uh, you follow nutrition because also dialysis need a lot of nutrition counseling. Okay. Because this patient with dialysis kidney failure, you're not taking the same meals we had, that the people who are normal people are taking. Mm -hmm. So, so long as you follow the prescription of dialysis and also you follow your nutrition well, mm -hmm. you'll you'll do well. Right. Yes. Yes. So once someone marches into this unit, yes, um, yes. what happens? Uh, say I am, I'm supposed to undergo a dialysis yes, yes, and yes. a majority of them who probably have gone through a couple of procedures could be knowing what is expected. Like I have just seen the patient saying, I think I'm done. Mm. I, I'm set. It's time for me to uh, step out. What goes into, you know, one getting into this unit and what is expected of them and what do they understand first if it's a first mm. experience? In the first experience, usually we have a counselor who, who usually ad, uh, uh, explain the procedure to the patient. Okay. So when the patient is coming here, he knows what's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, like but most of the patients when they end the year, they come and take their weight. We settle them in bed. We do their blood pressures. We see how their, their pressures are doing. We do blood sugar mm -hmm. if they are, they are more if they are diabetic patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, we proceed All right. with the procedure. What is this? Huh? What is this? This that one looks now. reddish. <laughs> After patient has after patient has finished the uh, finished dialysis, okay, uh, we do what we call retrans. We return we return uh, like now you're seeing the blood is going there. We return the blood back to the patient. Okay. So this is the color of the blood through this inside these pipes. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. So these are only what just water. This is no more saline. Oh, this is water. Yeah, no more saline. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is the cleaning process. It's uh, ongoing yes. or what? Uh, we is are finished now. Uh -huh. I am supposed to remove these lines. Uh huh. Of, uh, and then the, there's a the, the, there's a way that uh, they are cleaned differently from the disinfection that uh, you're talking about yes we, we wipe the the service mm -hmm. yes okay yes okay that's amazing so you speak of uh, different types of machines does it then also mean that uh, there are different types of dialysis in terms of procedures and, and, and i mean how you go about it we have uh, but majorly yeah these mm -hmm. are normal dialysis eh? But we have a dialysis which are being done for very sick patients mm -hmm. who are in ICU. Okay. We can do a dialysis even for 12 hours. Okay. Yeah. So this so is what's called, called slow, slow dialysis. They are unconscious. Yeah, they are unconscious and also they are, you, they, their pressures, they are not stable, so you do slow. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Are there instances that uh, there are individuals that would not uh, have a dialysis recommended for them, say pregnant women? No, so long as the kidneys are not doing well, mm -hmm. dialysis should be done because if you do, don't do dialysis, you're going to lose that patient. Okay. Because of the high ureas, the high ureas, creatinine, and also potassium. Mm -hmm. Potassium levels are usually high, which is very dangerous to the patient. Uh -huh. yes. Okay, so um, um, roughly when you say that it is necessary for them to have, is there an, an alternative? Uh, say it's all right, maybe it's not extreme. Uh, you know, uh, kidney failure, and therefore at this point we can try uh, other options before we settle for a dialysis. Like you said, nutrition maybe would come in handy to make sure that at least we're able to get the kidneys functioning. 
But before even we, you go to dialysis, mostly we usually we do what we call we, we do what we call slow progression of dialysis. Yeah? You manage patient before we go to dialysis. Okay. We usually come to dialysis when the now it has to become uh, extreme. Extreme. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, hold it right there, Doctor. I yes. think it's important that we take a short break and then we come back and understand when you speak about managing the patients before we resort for dialysis. Yes. Just exactly what does that mean? So after this break, we come back with more on Body Garage. Well, do you know what's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. Baraza la Siasa. Informative health discussions. Business. Farming. Tasty Wednesday. Fitness Thursday. And Feel Good Friday. With amazing DJs, celebs. <laughs> <laughs> and music bands every Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. How well do you know what's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. Baraza la Siasa. Informative health discussions. Business. Farming. Tasty Wednesday. Fitness Thursday. And Feel Good Friday. With amazing DJs. Celebs. <laughs> <laughs> and music bands every Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. How well do you know what's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. Baraza la Siasa. Today at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Discover a world full of opportunities. A place to build your skill and see the world in a different perspective. Sensei Institute of Technology is the home to the best practical courses, giving you hands-on experience to handle the world. We offer courses such as Plant Operator, Plant Mechanics, Driving and Trailer Driving, CCTV and Alarm Installation, Solar Installation, Electrical Installation, Motorcycle, Motor Vehicle Mechanics and Electronics, Building Construction Technology, Welding Fabrication, Roads and Dam Construction, Hospitality Courses, and many more. For you to join us, ensure you have your national ID card and be ready to enjoy the ride. Remember, my skills, my future at Sensei. Sensei College, my skills, my future. You're watching TV 47, the home of untold stories. said we are right at the Rui family hospital that is the dialysis unit as we get to understand some more on this dialysis procedure and what it takes for one to undergo the same those of us or those of you who could be having a kidney difficulties very important that you stay woke on this particular conversation uh dr george thank you so much once again for speaking to us i hope we get to some practical aspect of it and i know that in most cases unless you are seeing it done it becomes hard for us to get to the nitty-gritty details but i mean uh, dr is not mean he is going to take us through some bits of of what exactly one is expected to you know just see once they get into a dialysis unit but important 
Assistant Lead Actuary, uh, thank you so much once again for speaking to us. And we ask on this. Uh, you had spoken about the fact that before we result to, you know, a patient undergoing dialysis, there are other ways of managing the yes, situation. Yes. Yes. Uh, when you say that, what exactly do you mean? And what are some of these procedures that one can take as to ensuring that they're able to manage this before they decide it's a dialysis? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for that question. Eh? Uh, usually, we encourage we usually like uh, avoiding dialysis. Mm. So usually, what we do, we do what we call a slow. We manage what we call slow progression of the, to go to dialysis. So most of them we use drugs, we use nutrition, and also use a follow up, uh, some like weekly or tw tw twice per week. Mm -hmm. Patient come is being reviewed, see how we can manage it because. Uh, as much as possible, dialysis is available. We usually like to avoid. We usually go to dialysis when it's unavoidable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. When you speak about that, then it clearly means that uh, there are probably some risks uh, to it. Yes. What are some of the notable risks uh, for you know um, when that, that will be experienced in the event that someone goes through a dialysis process probably for a long time? Yeah. Risky. Uh, in dialysis, uh, some risk is like infection because mm. of the catheter. The, that okay. pipe we are putting here. Inside. Most of the time, uh, because of the skin, we have a bacteria in the skin, mm -hmm. they usually get some, some infection. Eh? Mm -hmm. So that can be risky to the patient. Mm -hmm. And even some of them are being admitted, given managed by antibiotics in the ward. And also, risk, another risk. Some patients, they feel very tired. We have also risk of uh, low blood pressure. Uh, we are going to put, you, you, if you, some patient, if you try to put in a machine, the PP usually go down. Mm. So it's very important. So, so when you're doing dialysis, we usually check the pressures after every one hour. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, doing this dialysis, some patient they get anemia because of usually they do some, some few blood. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm. Okay. A couple of times, uh, yeah. blood, uh, you know, has to be lost, yes, and yes. well, that would make sense. But then, like you rightfully put it, in that case, yeah. it is important to balance this with the nutrition aspect. Make yes. sure that you uh, eat uh, foods that are rich, you know, in say zinc, rich, you know, foods that would be able. And to also, we have a, we have many foods which the patient should avoid. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Many uh -huh. many food like bana bananas. They should avoid bananas. Uh, uh, potatoes, was, uh, yes. sweet uh, potatoes, uh -huh. <laughs> chipos. Yes. Uh, why? Why? Eh? Why these ones in particular? Because they have what we call high potassium levels. Okay. And somebody with kidney failures, they usually potassium is uh, the kidney is not able to regulate the potassium. Okay. And the potassium is usually very very dangerous. High level potassium in the body is very dangerous mm -hmm. to the patient, to the okay. heart, heart of the patient. Ah. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, so, can one say that, uh, or are there instances where a dialysis can be temporary? Uh, because you started by saying that, you know, sometimes it could be a lifetime affair, and there are others that uh, are not result. so, yes, yeah. dire. So that means uh, it can be a temporary affair for some people yes, or some yes, patients? Yes, yes, There's a, there's a dialysis, uh, uh, mm -hmm. kidney failure, uh, we call a uh, acute kidney failure. Which are most of them caused by something like malaria, mm -hmm. uh, malaria. Uh, vomiting and diarrhea, excessive mm -hmm. diarrhea. Mm -hmm. If you manage those patients very well, uh, they do dialysis three to four times and they, they usually resolve. Ah. They will go back. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you know, the, the situation is reversed in totality. Yes, yeah. Ah, all right. Yes, That's yes. amazing. Uh, you spoke about uh, follow up programs, which are very, very important. Yes. I want to assume, even after you know, you resort that uh, you know, a patient should be going through a dialysis yes, procedure, yes. Uh, it's always good again to do follow up with your yes. patients and all that. So, in this case, is it you who does the follow up or there, there's someone else? There's who... a consultant, uh -huh. a nephrologist consultant. Okay. Yeah, we usually see the, they come and review the patients. All right. When the patient go to the clin their clinics after a month, they refuse to see what is happening with the patient. Mm -hmm. And then if, if could they say any adjustment want to do, yeah. All right. Yeah. Just how expensive could this uh, procedure be now that you said uh, sometimes you'd opt for like, uh, you know, a patient to go through um, uh, the procedure twice, uh, say, twice uh, per week, yeah. Yeah, twice per week yeah. for purposes of saving cost. Yeah. Or, uh, patient with the NHIF card, they usually pay, uh, the NHIF card pays for patient at 9500 Okay. Uh, but if you don't have NHIF, you usually pay cash, 9500 That is per session? Per session. 
wow. per session. Uh -huh. So per, per week, that was almost 19,000. Okay. Yes. All right. So, yeah. and that uh, is inclusive also of uh, some other medication, or I mean, at, at that point again, you need to get extra medication yes, yes, yes. Uh, to keep you going. Yeah. What is this one uh, thing that one needs to do if they know very well that they are a patient who, um, you know, has to undergo a dialysis like on a weekly basis? Yeah. This patient should, should uh, they should uh, make sure their card is they pay the NHIF card. Okay. They should be up to date. And also, this patient also should always uh, follow nutrition counseling because even uh, most of the patients here, we come and remove a lot of fluids. They retain a lot of fluid. Okay. When, when the kidney fails, mm -hmm. when you take fluid, fluid include water, milk, wa uh, any, any fluid, mm -hmm. they usually retain. Okay. So this patient should uh, usually limit the water they usually take. Mm. We usually prescribe that a patient, if possible, you can measure his urine in 24 hours right. and he had 500 mils on the urine he has measured so that that's the amount of the fluid he's supposed to take mm. because most of them their kidney fails to to remove the water mm -hmm. so most of patients when they come here their their body are being swollen or they have what called oedema mm -hmm. the body some have difficulty in breathing okay because of the fluids which has uh, they has blocked the lungs so they now be able to breathe Mm -hmm. Unless they're being done dialysis so that they can back, come back to the normal state. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. Um, so after trying to manage, and maybe uh, it appears like one uh, has to go through a dialysis. Yes. Uh, what, what, at what stage would you say this is recommended? You know, at this point now, we have tried this, we have tried that, and therefore it is now time that we recommend a dialysis. Uh, if the patient, uh, we shall look at what called urine output. Patient with uh, kidney failure, mm -hmm. the urine, the urine usual urine is very small. Mm -hmm. So there's a time the urine diminishes until this patient is not able to produce any urine. Uh -huh. So that's at the time now you can say now this one, because it's not able to produce the urine. So the urine is inside the body. So okay. it's very toxic in the body. So that's the need dialysis. That's the time now we are going to, to come to dialysis. Mm -hmm. Others they, have, they usually have what we call a difficult breathing. Others they have what we call a hyperkalemia, okay. high potassium levels. That's now there is there is no treatment unless we do dialysis. Okay. If you don't do dialysis, you're not you're, you may lose the patient. Mm. Yes, yes. On what instances would you not <laughs> recommend a dialysis? In as much as uh, probably the situation is dire and uh, unless you see the patient is producing enough urine, and also we usually do what we call the uh, UCs, uh, urea electrolyte balance, uh, urea electrolytes. That's the one which can which can guide us. We see the level of the ureas, the level of uh, creatinine levels. Mm -hmm. that they, those are among the best lines, which usually guide. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. And so, uh, say I'm at home, and probably all of a sudden I'm not feeling well. Yes, yes. Uh, what are the signs on, and symptoms of, you know, a, a person who's likely to have kidney failure? Um, what are some of the things that you need to look at uh, to know that there's a danger and maybe I need to seek medical advice? Most of the... Uh, if, if the patient uh, complains of uh, reducing urine output, the urine you know, it used to produce a urine, many urine uh, used to go to, uh, to the toilet three to four times a day. So if you are now reducing even to once once a day or even none, and also you will see the body of the patient has been is, is, is swollen. Eh? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. with edema, and also some of patient they complain of chest uh, chest pain. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. At this point, then you need to seek yeah, medical yeah, advice. Yeah. All right, I see we have some um, some things there, some pipes. Uh, yes. Is that water or what? <laughs> uh, probably you can take us through, you know, a quick uh, review of what uh, plays out here before we close it. Uh, this is what we call acid concentrate. Eh? These are the, these are the things we're using. You can just hold it up, no problem. Yes. Yeah. These are the, what we are using in dialysis eh, in the machine. Eh? Okay. This is what we call acid concentrate. That is water now. Acid concentrate, not uh, water. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is not water. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this is from a company. It's being manufactured from a company. Uh -huh. They usually, they manufacture and also they, there's some electrolytes which are being... Are uh, used incorporated. Yes, okay. incorporated in this, oh, in this yes. fluid. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And also this is called bicarbonate. This, acid, this is the base. Okay. Yeah. Sodium bicarbonate. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the Kawaida sodium bicarbonate? Yes. Okay. But there's some uh, electrolytes also. Uh -huh. They are being cooperated inside. And also, this is what's called bloodline. Right. 
This, oh yes, the lines. Uh, this uh, one that you were line. talking about. Uh -huh. yeah. This is where the blood is going to pass from. This the red one. This is remove the blood from the patient. Okay. From the patient now. Uh -huh. And now that the patient has already left, it means you have to remove all uh, this? this one, uh, we Why not remove what we're seeing? Oh, <laughs> that is a procedure that needs time and... See, after, after, I will remove after we finish with you. After yes. you finish, why can't you do it when we're here? Eh? It's a bit complicated, no, no, what? No. Uh -huh. I will do. You no, will no. do it? Uh, when, when we finish, I will do it. All right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then that's this the blood, blood lines. Line. Okay. This is where it removes the blood from the patient. Okay. And also after the blood is being cleaned using this dialyzer. Okay. Uh, the mm -hmm. urea, the creatinine level are being removed. They usually go to the sewage line. Eh? All right. Through the uh, behind the machine, there's a okay. pipe there. For is this pipe? No, it's fine. We're going to check. <laughs> there's a pipe there. Yeah. When the blood has been cleaned by the, the uh, by the this dialyzer, the clean blood goes back to the patient. Okay. And the the dirty the those urea creatinines are being removed. They go through the when, line. when you're saying that blood goes back to the patient, yes. uh, are we talking about a scenario where blood is entirely drained from the patient, or what? This one, the, like this one, this is the red, this, this red line. Eh? Okay. We shall put on the catheter of the patient. Where the, 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 this catheter is being uh, inserted in a in a very big vein here, mm -hmm. a jugular vein, yes, subclavian uh, vein. So the blood they shall come. The, the blood which are very dirty, they are, they are dirty because they have those urea, creatinines. They are being removed. Mm -hmm. They come through the, <coughs> the machine, they go through the dialyzer. The laser, the laser cleans the blood. After cleaning the blood, the clean blood go back to the patient. Mm -hmm. So that means a patient is not able to pass urine normally? When? When they're going through a dialysis or, or normal, after they're out of the dialysis, are, are they able to pass the urine normally? It, depend, it usually depends on the stage of the kidney failure. Okay. Yes, yes. All Some right. patients pass urine, others they don't pass. There's even a patient who can stay two to three years without passing urine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, hence the reason why they have the catheter. Okay. Well, uh, fair enough. I guess uh, we have uh, something else that we need to uh, This see. is the dialyzer now. Yes. Uh, this is like the artificial kidney. Mm -hmm. This is where all the procedure is being done, mm -hmm. cleaning the blood. Okay. Yes, this is like the kidney we have inside the body. Right. Yes, oh, yes. okay. So it's artificial kidney. It's artificial. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. And so at this point, the, the kidney right inside, what happens when this is uh, taking up its The job? kidney inside already is uh, not is, 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 is failed. Not, it's failed. But you've said uh, sometimes on instances it's not failed in totality. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Mm. All right, uh, Dr. Ari, thank you so much for uh, speaking to us. I hope we have gotten the basics of this. Yes. Uh, this is what you expect once you get into the, uh, you know, a dialysis unit or renal unit. And, I mean, you would meet uh, people like Dr. George, yes. uh, who's a nephrology nurse uh, for yes. such. Uh, is it a painful experience or process? No, it's not painful. It's not painful. Uh, yes. So once you sit the there... The painful procedure is only when, you, when the pipe is being started, the catheter. Okay. Yeah. Which is non... Uh, normally done once or it's once it's once yes yes once in a lifetime or after a while then you'd be happy once it to depends come in case it blocks you you can it's a bit to be reinserted again okay but it's once if it's uh, working uh, and also we have what we call fistula mm -hmm. these are we usually these are this is being done done by cardiothoracic surgeons eh? okay they they fix uh, they combine artery and vein mm -hmm. and we can use that one as a the, the catheter do to do the dialysis. Ah, all right. Yes, yes. That's, once again, uh -huh. that's, that's what's called permanent. Yes. Okay, well, once again, nephrology nurse, uh, Georgia, thank you so much for speaking to us. Okay. Uh, remember, we are coming to you right from the Rai family hospital where of course uh, we have been going through the process of a dialysis not going through it as such but just getting to learn all the basics once you get into a dialysis unit or the renal unit and what it is that you get to expect once again i hope we can have some other time where we'll then get a chance to see the actual procedure but yes. as of now we close this session of body garage as i look forward to see you again next week same time same place my name is linda alela always enjoy the best of the home of untold stories right here on tv 47.